The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Savannah Hugh Moeller, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. <laughs> I'm going to stampede you. <laughs> Mickey Spagnola conducting the orchestra. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> As we get started on a short week, a very short week of uh, Mick Shots. And Mickey is just beaming ear to ear. Why do you think Mickey is in such a good mood today? What do you think? What could possibly be the it, reason? It better be because of Victory Monday. I'm hoping it's Victory that's Monday. It yeah. Oh, for him but though, you know, it's Bill, victor- you always come up with something else. Victories so. Monday. <laughs> it's yeah, victories at plural. Okay, you had the Cowboys <laughs> winning a game. You had Jimmy going into the Ring of Honor. Yay. But most importantly, in Mickey's mind, he probably landed in Charlotte just in time <laughs> to see Mizzou beat Florida. Was it Florida? Mm-hmm. Florida. That's right. Walk off field goal. Well, with a five seconds to go. That counts as a walk off. That's that kicker that won that game earlier this year. Thicker kicker. The thicker, the thicker kicker. kicker. That's kicker. right. And yes. it's spelled, by the way, T H I C C E R. That's his name? Thicker kicker. Thicker is his name? No. Oh, he just looks thicker. He is thicker. <laughs> he may be the heaviest kicker in college football. So, wait, what's, what's the thicker? Who? Thicker, he's big. He's that, like 200. So they didn't spell it, like, but that's yeah. not his name. That is not his no, name. no, no. Okay. No. Right. So they kicked a field goal to win the game. There was like, what, 12 seconds left, five, right? Five went after it went through. Move yes. your mic up a little bit closer five, so we can hear you gloat. Five after <laughs> it went through, by the way. And there just happened to be in the hotel lobby where they had the game on the big screen. Uh when Florida kicked their field goal to take the lead, all of a sudden I found out there were some Florida fans there, and they started doing that gator chomp in my face, right? <laughs> and then there were some KU fans that were celebrating, right? Mm-hmm. And all I did was point at the screen and let them know that there was a minute 30 to go, and our kicker has already hit a 61-yard field goal, so we ain't got to go very far, right? <laughs> And so Sorry, I, I just didn't mean to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> so I just smiled. I just smiled. Didn't say anything. And after they made the field goal, I just smiled and went over there and told them, "You didn't know you were dealing with the number nine ranked team in the country." <laughs> That's the trash talk. That, that was, was it? my trash. Golly, that was bad. Is that the highest they've ever been ranked? <laughs> we're gonna teach him a thing or two. <laughs> no. <laughs> Back in and Chase Daniel had him ranked number one in the nation, number didn't he? Number one yeah. in the nation. That's right. Okay. Number two, and then went to the SEC title game in 2012 and 13. South Lake Carroll's Chase Daniel had him number one in the in the nation. By the way, they play Highland Park. Speaking of walk off field goals, as we bring it back to the Jones family, although I don't think there's a member of the family playing for Highland, Highland Park, Park now, yet. they had a walk off field goal to beat McKinney on Friday night. I saw that. Which brings us to Sunday in what will complete. Mickey's weekend on Monday night is a Philadelphia loss in Kansas City tonight. Well, that's why I'm I'm decked out in red today. Kansas City <laughs> Chief red. red. That's right. Can we play Stampede, the victory uh, song tomorrow morning if the Chiefs beat the Eagles we and the Cowboys move that. within a game? We cannot of first do that. Place? That's not how it goes. That'll be up to yeah, you stretch producer it. You stretch Supreme. It. Yeah, don't there. Do that. Yeah. All right, Savannah, how was your week? Oh my gosh, it was just amazing. It really was. I'm I'm happy to be back today, but I am switching my brain from beach mode to football mode. So, got to get back. And you got to do it island. quick because we got another one coming up on Thursday. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. But we're back. It was very fun, but I'm happy to be back in the studio with you guys. Did we hold down the fort last week? Well, 
kind of, sort of. We muddled, we muddled through it. Man, we really muddled through one show. Oh, my God. Was, <laughs> and then bad. Everson deserts us. <laughs> it was pretty bad. On yeah. his way to New Mexico. <laughs> right. New Mexico. <laughs> I'm, breaking, I'm breaking bad. <laughs> um, okay, so. So. You know, I think it's interesting. We're going to start with the big story of the weekend. Uh, if you want. Which is the big story of the weekend? Well. That the Cowboys are now seven and three and, and did have what six they... games this season in which they won by twenty or more points, which is one away from the club record and set in nineteen sixty eight. Or is it some other story? Um well let's do first things first, because the other story's big, but getting that win two straight now and pulling within a game and a half of the Eagles who, if they get beat tonight, it would only be one game back, and you still get to play them. Um, and they still have to play a resurgent Buffalo team that beat the Jets yesterday mm-hmm. and San Francisco, and San Francisco, which really Francisco. is resurgent. And, yeah, yeah. and the Cowboys mm-hmm. and Seattle. Um, yeah, I think that basically the Cowboys did what they should have done in Carolina. It took a little bit longer to uh, materialize than they probably hoped for, but Again, a win is a win on the road, and uh, as Bill said, they beat another team by 20-plus points. Last time that happened, I'm not sure Everson was born yet. Really? The last time they had six. More. Oh, okay. More. More than. Tw- six straight, or six in which a Which was 1968, and yes, 68. Everson was born prior to he 1968. He was born before 68? Yes, that's okay. right. I know, I, I don't look like it, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so. Hey, so picks to click, what what happened? Who, who I thought, that? oh, when he said pick, I thought he yeah. was going right to the cornerback. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> which, by the way, he's after you. Man, this guy's amazing. Is that crazy? He's leading the team, right, in touchdowns? Uh, that was his fourth. No, well, CD's got five touchdowns. Oh, I think CD's well, got five. A late surge. So that yeah. ties the single-season NFL record. Four in one season. That's crazy, man. It's crazy. How many did you have? Who, 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 uh, How many did you have? I have one. One? Period. In your career. In your and career? I wasn't even here. No, no. Yeah, I didn't even With get the here. Giants? Yeah, with the Giants. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, against the Redskins. All those interceptions. All those interceptions. I've heard it before, Spags. <laughs> Thank you. Jeez. I've heard it before. And did you do a forward roll after you caught the ball and then got up and ran nah, 31 yards? No, we weren't doing all that back Man, then. don't you know, as soon as he got that, well, anytime he picks it off, he's thinking end zone. Well, you know but what in he this said. case yeah. in particular, you're, man, if you could read a he person's a mind. Quick. Boy, he got us yes, upset. he well, knew exactly where he's his, headed next. In his post-game <laughs> interview, he was just saying how he thought back to his days when he was playing receiver in high school, mm-hmm. and how he just used to just read the ball and be able to have that in his hands. And he he said after especially breaking the record, like or I'm sorry, tying the record, all he wants to do is break it at this point. So who who, who owned, who's he tied with? There's three he, guys. Eric Allen. Eric Allen's the most recent one. Ninety three. Nice. nice. Um, Ninety three for Eric Allen. Mm-hmm. Man, we're all getting old. Jim uh, <laughs> Kearney. 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 Uh, you know what? You got me on him. Nineteen seventy two. Okay. And Ken Houston. That, that, you'll have to ask Mickey about him. Ken Houston though. Yeah. No, Ken, Ken Houston, Houston was a big, Ken Houston. big time player. Yeah. Yeah. So Jim Carney, Kearney, do you know? I, th- I think it's Kearney. Okay. Uh, he said this morning, somebody asked him, did he know about the record? And he goes, oh, yeah, I, I heard about it. And he said, so when I got the interception, I said to myself, I better get up and go get it. <laughs> and so he, he got up so fast. I mean, the, the wide receiver's right there. Yeah. If he's alert, he's going to. Just touch him. But, I mean, he wasn't alert. Well, you know what the weird thing was? Just before that happened, I was thinking in my head, watching the game, I'm saying, have they thrown to another wide receiver other than Thielen? Yeah. And they had. Chenault had, a, I think, and a catch. And he was kind of out of the backfield. A couple of, he had a couple right. of catches, but he's, he's used more. But they a, didn't throw the ball at Gilmore or at Bland. All those Thielen catches were uh, slot. Lewis. Uh, or at the at, finally the second half they put Thomas on him, uh, Wanye Thomas, but they didn't throw any at Bland and any at Gilmore the whole t- game. And the one time they did, I think it was Tomingo, uh, he picks it and goes for a touchdown. 
Well, the last time they played at home, he had two pick sixes thrown. Right. Bryce Young did. So maybe there was a reason they weren't throwing to the outside corners. The wide receivers need to turn into DBs, obviously. They, mm-hmm. There were no too many pick sixes. Well, and then they did a very good job of putting pressure on poor Bryce Young. Seven sacks. Uh, Micah Parsons sets the tone uh, with a third down sack on each of their first two possessions. Click to pick? Huh. Yes. Both of us, <laughs> by the way. Well. Well. Uh, who had the? Who had, <laughs> I want to know where well goes. Well, it's I thought we had a rule. It was before Savannah joined the show, so Savannah could pick Micah, right? Yeah, but, but that's didn't the last Everson time. That's the last time. Yeah, picking Everson, Micah. didn't we have a rule the first week of the season that you could pick Micah one time? Once. This was special. And Mickey decided he's because Micah didn't make the stat sheet last <laughs> That's right. week that he could pick and him this week. And he was going to be motivated. <laughs> so we only have one one pick for Micah this year? One click you get one, one, pick, you one pick per, per pod. Yeah, so pod you pick. picked a good week for we it. We had special yeah. dispensation. for it. Mm-hmm. Special dispensation after he didn't get anything last week, not even a tackle. See, he changes the rules in mid-game. Mm-hmm. Hey, like the Big 12 what's the name of the show, by the way? <laughs> See, I texted uh, Mickey my clicks to pick uh, on uh, Friday morning, and he just he responds, he goes, you keep stealing mine. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> She's reading my mind. And wanting... Who had who had the, the right score? Who had the close? I, had... I did. Oh. <laughs> oh. Which was? I had forty-two to thirteen. Oh, Savannah! I think Savannah and I had thirty-eight ten or thirty-eight thirteen. I had. Yep, yeah, you had thirty-eight. I 13. had twenty-eight seventeen. I Didn't think. I have thirty to something? So thirty-three was, to ten. So I was closest, huh? I was closest. Thirty-eight. Who was 13. my pick to click? I think it was Deron Bland. Maybe. Was it? Somebody wrote. Yeah, no. Somebody <laughs> wrote we it down. We weren't here to write it down. Right. That's right. <laughs> it wasn't Deron Bland. No, I can say he didn't have. We did mention last week that Deron Bland slash Stephon Gilmore would be licking their chops this week because of the two pick sixes. I picked Gilmore because he went back. That's right. Your your guy was Gilmore. Yeah. What do we do for? Well, you have to be thrown at in order to do something, right? We gave Chris our pod picks. I forgot what the question was. Chris doesn't care about this stuff, man. I don't remember either. Nick Eatman came in here and asked us after the show. Oh, that's right. And I don't even remember what it was now. It was first sack. sack. No. Oh. No. Was it was it first, first touchdown. Defensive touchdown. Yeah. Defensive touchdown. Mm. Gosh, In a second, sh- I'll pull him up. We should oh, all, I might have gotten this all one. I'm, yeah, this, is what, this is where I might have picked Bland. I think I might have picked Bland on that. We're going to find out I here. think you okay, picked Gilmore. Uh, right, here he goes, producer Supreme. Let's see. I have it right here. And... I try Bill to cover. Got, oh, hold on. This is last week. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about second. it. Um, I try to cover myself on all picks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to save the other news for the next the segment? Sex, next segment, yeah. Because we got special video. All right. Savannah did oh, not okay. have a pad pick. Right. She wasn't. Bill here. picked Bland. Yes. He's lying. No, no. Yes. No. He was one of, it looks like, about 10. <laughs> <laughs> so one of you 10. Pat, you can pat yourself on the back, but you uh, per, a got courageous. I knew I got something right. Um, I got something right. And then are we, are we going to make it where Duran Blaine can't be picked anymore, just like Micah? And I had Parsons. Mickey's big par- pick Parsons for defensive touch. Pod, defensive touch. Podcast. I mean, for the pod, pod pick. pick. Yeah. The pod pick. Boy, you just yeah. really stepped all over Parsons. Well, he, he might have had it. One of those sacks. <laughs> I Nate said his, but I did not send his in. Oh, okay. Because he said Ferguson. I said he doesn't play defense. <laughs> he, said, he said Ferguson saying, the rest of the he year. He kept saying Ferguson. <laughs> Ferguson. I was like, all right. <laughs> oh, there was a Ferguson who played in the defensive line here. <laughs> there used to be. There was, but yeah. he doesn't play it currently. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the win gets the Cowboys to 7-3. and three. Mm-hmm. And they're halfway to my four-game winning streak mandate that they have to be on before they play the Eagles. And now they get— You know what my mandate was? Five, five. games. I know. Well, Take care we'll, of Philadelphia, too. Well, get to Philadelphia. but uh, And now they play three and seven Washington. Who They've lost three of their last—is it three and seven or four? No, they're not. Four. It, they are— 
four and seven? They haven't had Stand a bye by. yet. Washington's uh, now four, four and seven. seven. Four and yeah. seven. <laughs> but tough losses, though. But All they've lost losses, three, they? not this Got last one. They lost. They to, lost to the Giants. To the Giants. Oh yeah. And <laughs> despite what happened? despite yeah. registering nine <laughs> sacks of what, Tommy what DeVito, <laughs> they uh, they sacked him they sacked nine times. Nine sacks, but they turned it over six times. But they turned the ball over. That's six what times. happened. They had three interceptions and three fumbles lost. And, you know, after last week's game, I thought. Mm, there's no way you can find a worse team in the NFL than the New York Giants. No. And then the New York Giants went to Washington and found a worse team than them. <laughs> Golly, that's crazy. At least on that day. Tommy that wasn't Div- the worst. That wasn't the worst part of that day, by the way, for Washington. They lose somebody. No, did you hear what happened after the game? No, no. no. The the hot water didn't work in either dressing room. In in Washington. Well, they, that's the old trick they used to play on the Cowboys. No, it, it was both locker rooms. They were both not working. Oh. So they said they both out of hot water. Out of hot water. So time to wow. get out of that. Felt a, Yikes. Felt a lot colder for Washington. But they let Tommy DeVito throw for like 240 yards and three touchdowns. Told you he looked like Brock Purdy to me. That's right. <laughs> Watch out for yep. Tommy DeVito. Yep. Which, by the way, at old RFK. Walt Garrison told me the story about how uh, the the Redskins would turn the hot water off in the Cowboys locker room after a game. Mm. And one year, it, it it was cold outside, and the water was not hot. And he basically wore his uniform on the charter flight back home. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even bother showering. He just took his helmet off, his pads, and wore whatever else he had on. I don't blame him. Dirt and all. All right, we've got a video we're going to play when we come back here as we will get to the top story of the weekend when Mix Shots continues in a moment. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott who looks right, it's not there. He escapes left, he'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese-to-sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Cowboys football and Miller Lite. What a pairing. Can cracks a kickoff. Tailgates going way past postgame. Sunday night overtimes followed by Monday morning swagger. Brisket in the smoker. Miller Lite and the Cool. America's team playing America's greatest sport. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys football tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Back, back to Mick Shots. K Post Roofing and Waterproofing, the official roofer of the Dallas Cowboys. All right, very good. It's so nice to have Savannah back. (laughs) Happy to be back, guys. You know, I was thinking with uh, the announcement just prior to kickoff yesterday that Jimmy is going into the Ring of Honor that you might have to be over the age of 
50, 45 or 50 to fully understand the whole Jimmy and Jerry thing. I mean, we're, we're <laughs> no, approaching. No, you, it doesn't matter how old you are. It's hard to understand <laughs> I mean, like my, the Jimmy and Jerry thing. Uh, so, so, like, for me, I'm well aware of it. Younger than 45, yes. Yes, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm well aware of it. But give me a little context. Yeah, just here. to fully. That's Remind why I was thinking. Me. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and it, it's 30 years ago this coming spring, as a matter of fact. It was March of 1994 when they parted ways after two straight Super Bowl wins. So we're approaching 30, the 30 year mark on that. Which is amazing. So if let's think about it. When did you come into sports consciousness? Myself, I was about. Six or seven years old, probably, before I really understood things about, you know, NFL or whatever. And so you would have to be born born in earlier than 1988 to really understand what was going on when Jimmy and Jerry parted ways in 1994. So that would put you at, what, 35 years old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's been... So, so I was exaggerating a little bit. So you have to be over the age of 35 to fully understand. But really, 1989 is the start date on it as far as the mm-hmm. Cowboys are concerned. So you'd have to be over the age of 40 to have a really good comprehension of it. Right, Mickey? Yeah, and I do have a very good consciousness of it. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so funny thing that happened, uh, I was walking down onto the field during warm-ups, and some guy, the Cowboy fans were all over the place. Uh-huh. As a matter of fact, there was a parking lot that we drove past on the on the bus going to the stadium, and it was specifically for Cowboy fans. They had tents up. It was just amazing how many Cowboy fans were there. So I'm walking down probably an hour and a half, hour 45 before the game to go down for watch warm-ups and some guy stops me and you know on the chat and the last thing he asked me he goes so when's jerry going to put jimmy into the ring of honor <laughs> and i said don't worry it's gonna happen it will happen at some point well what did i know about as soon as I got to the other side of the field, that uh, there's Jimmy. It was about to happen because Jimmy was there. He was talking to Jerry. Everything was upbeat, and there was a lady in the middle there talking with him. Well, I found out she was a producer for Fox. Okay. And they had this whole thing already coordinated for like two weeks that this was what going to happen at this game. Because mm-hmm. when I saw Jimmy, I'm going, "Well, what's he doing here?" He, he, yeah, I, they have a pregame show to do. I found out during our pregame show on live on CBS 11, which starts at 1030 on Sunday morning. And they said uh, during our break, they said that they've got a shot of Jimmy and Jerry talking to each other. Or that's what we're going to show coming out of this next break. I'm like. Why is Jimmy is, is Fox? <laughs> why would Fox do their pregame show at Carolina? <laughs> and I had already watched p- so clueless. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so, so clueless. I immediately thought, well, Jimmy must be there because Jerry's going to induct him into the Carolina Panthers Ring of right, Honor. Right. <laughs> so smart Alec, right? Um, and then that was my it, first thought. And then it was like and everything was so upbeat, and I'm thinking. Oh, I know what's getting ready to happen, but I didn't know they had it coordinated with at the time with Fox to show it live on their pregame show. Uh, and so that's why that lady was talking to him on and on. And, and, and I see Scott uh, Purcell. He's got the, the boom pole, and Jimmy and Jerry are talking, and he's got it up over their heads, and I'm going... Well, why is he doing that? What if they're just, mm-hmm. he you know, knew exactly and what then was going they, on. they already knew. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the Scott did a good job of keep, uh, keeping a secret. That's right. He did. And then when I finally found out, then it was like, and you can't tweet it out. This is going live. And I think somebody probably did. They can't keep a I secret. Do, I think right? people started putting two and two together. Yeah. So, so I saw um, Jimmy and Jerry and the Jones family at the Chargers game. <clears throat> so he was there on the sidelines w- during right. that game, so, but they were just having a normal conversation. So I'm honestly curious how far this has been planned you know, in I advance. Heard, uh, 
I actually heard this morning that Jimmy, I heard this from Pat Jones, former Oklahoma State head coach and uh, assistant coach with Jimmy, with the Dolphins, and and with, with Jimmy at Oklahoma State when Jimmy was a head coach there. He said on his radio show this morning, they had an Oklahoma State reunion two weeks ago, and Jimmy Flew here. His wife uh, had friends here who who stayed in Dallas that weekend while Jimmy went up to Stillwater for the reunion. And that's when Jimmy met with Jerry, which was two weeks ago, basically. And I was told it it came uh, to fruition two weeks ago. So this thing had been. Pat said he had to keep it a secret for two weeks. Yeah, Mm pending. So. So anyway, so um, I'm standing there, and I don't know if Chris found the video that uh, Alex shot, but I'm standing there watching this, and Jimmy looks up and sees me, and he kind of gives me a little wave. And then Jerry had walked away, and next thing I know, if Chris has the video, do you have it, Chris? There it is. Watch this. And for folks listening... (laughs) <laughs> oh, <look his> <laughs> and guess and guess what he guess what, what he, we need to explain for people say? who aren't watching uh, jimmy, jimmy came over and shook my hand he looked like he shouted something yeah. at someone over there yeah. and then he went over and shook mickey's hand so are, are you going what into the ring say? of honor next so what he said <laughs> what he said was he goes it feels like we should be doing the radio show again because when he was uh, the beginning, uh, 89, 90, 91, somewhere in there, he was doing his radio show uh, at, the, at the ranch from a closet. And me and the producer, Rich Pomenko, would sit there with him during that hour radio show that uh, they were hosting back at KRLD, right? And so every week, uh, Rich would bring a cooler of Heineken. <laughs> and and so when he said that, I said, "So do I need to go get some Heineken?" And he goes, "It's now Heineken Light, okay." Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> but afterwards, so this is hilarious. So we're they finished the the press conference, and the press conference went past the kickoff, and so we're walking to the elevator to the press box suite level, and they were kind of walking with us, and so. They all get in the entourage, and everybody else gets in the elevator, and we were going to have to wait. Well, somebody in the elevator starts doing this, like motioning, come on in, come on in. And I didn't know they were motioning someone behind me. <laughs> I thought they were saying for me to come in. There was oh room. So I just walked in. You're really feeling yourself, so weren't I, you? So, I, golly, I just, I He's just like, well, Jimmy, in. Jimmy said hi to me. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm in, in, right? Well, the funny thing was, so I go in. <laughs> and somebody follows in after me, right? And Jimmy looks at me and he goes, you know, he goes, when we did that radio show, he goes, I thought, you know, when we first got here, I used to do the radio show at the University of Miami on location. He goes, but when we got here and things were going so bad, I figured I didn't need to be out in the public for this. So we did it in a closet, in, in a closet in, <laughs> across, uh, you know, across from a hallway uh, at at Valley Ranch, and we'd sit there, and Jimmy would drink his Heinekens during the break, and, <laughs> and you know, and I got to hear the best part was in the breaks, right? Because now he was telling me stuff that he couldn't say on the air. Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty special, and I couldn't believe after all these years that's what he remembered, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not the time he got in the elevator at, uh, before a preseason game at the hotel. Uh, and I was with my family members, and he looks at our, my like eight or ten year old daughter and goes, "Boy, you need to tell your dad he needs to be nicer to me." <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? What'd you do? I said, "Oh, nice, Jimmy." No, I mean for him to say <laughs> oh, that because he thought we were all <laughs> criticizing him because they were losing all the time. <laughs> hey, it was one in fifteen. Right? Yeah, we were losing all the time. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it was, uh, it, it, you know what, and the whole thing when they did the press conference, and I just wrote about it in my column, part of my column, uh, they were up on the podium together, and it sort of reminded me, short of the Super Bowl trophy, when they were on podiums together, yucking it up and having a good time after winning the, the Super Bowls. And just to see them both up there, now in their 80s, uh, 
it just seemed right. And it finally, as Jerry and and Jimmy both said, if we weren't so stubborn, this probably would have happened a long time ago. Or what happened would not have happened if we weren't young and stubborn. If we weren't young and stubborn. They said both. They were, yeah. And both of them. They were both part of it. It wasn't mm. just Jerry. It was Jimmy because he was looking for uh, an out because he wanted to go coach somewhere else where there was water. And he had already flirted with Jacksonville, the Giants, and then uh, was was looking at uh, Miami, too, by the way, which he ended up with two years later, right? It There's not 96. enough water at Lake Grapevine? Yeah. Or... I, well, here here's the other part. Find the water at the spot where you win the Super Bowl. Here's that the other nice. part of it. When he was doing that radio show, uh, technically he was under contract that whatever he got paid for it had to go to the Cowboys. Uh, but after the 93 Super Bowl, KRLD had a sponsor, and they gave him a boat. And he went on vacation for two weeks in March, uh, or no, January of 93, after the Super Bowl, right. so probably February. And he got back to the ranch, and I ran into him, and I go, where the hell you been? He goes, I went on vacation. I go, vacation? Just like that. He goes, it's the first vacation I've taken since uh, I took the job at Oklahoma State. And that was 1978, if I remember correctly. I think that's right. And I said to myself, oh, no, he's found out there's life beyond football. This is not a good sign, right? Yikes. And by God, three months later or two months later, the breakup happened. Well, and then after he uh, retired from coaching, after the Dolphin stint, he figured out there's life beyond football. He right. really, truly found out right. there's life beyond football. Now, what I was struck by, I, inter I did a Zoom interview with him about when his book came out, uh, maybe last year at this time. Right. Swagger, his book came out. And even just via Zoom, I was amazed at I mean at how relaxed he is now compared to what he was 30 years ago, and uh, just at, at, now he was selling a book, but right. mm -hmm. gen, how genuine, really. And I'd heard these stories about him from all the uh, TV producers and people that work with him at Fox and stuff. Funnest what, guy ever. Yeah, ever. Just as nice as could be. So two quick stories, and then we'll move on. Uh, one year in training camp in uh, Austin, and it was after Tony Wise and Dave Wonstadt left for Chicago. So it had been after the 92 Super Bowl, and Wonstadt got the head coaching job. So we're at training camp, and all of a sudden, Rich Dalrymple, the Cowboys PR guy, comes around to a couple of us and said, hey, Jimmy wants to have a little – happy hour with you guys well what was happening is his guys weren't there and he needed to go and talk right so we go to this mexican restaurant in austin and uh having beers and nachos or whatever and uh the mariachi band is playing and they kept coming playing by us right and we couldn't hear each other there was no talking so jimmy finally gets up and goes hands the guy that was the head of the mariachi band, here's $100 if you'll just, just quit playing. playing. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do that on purpose. Right? You know, you Maybe like that may happen. 100% do. Yeah. And he just wanted to shoot the bull with people, right, to, to just talk. And he was just talking football. It was all off the record and, and just having a, a really good time. But that was him. He would he – would, he, if you could get him away from football – and then uh, I remember Daryl Johnson to Johnston told me this. Uh, they were in that uh, 1993 season. They were seven and four, and they had lost the first two games of the season, and they had lost the two games Sunday, Thursday, and seven and four. And he basically went and told the team, if we're going to win the NFC East, if we're going to get home field advantage for the playoffs, we got to win the final five games. And he, uh, Daryl told me he 
just grinded and grinded and grinded during those five games to win, and they eventually did, but it was overtime, Eddie Murray field goal, and it, what everybody forgets, it was the second possession of overtime because they stopped them on the, the Giants had the ball first, and they win the game on an overtime field goal. They go to 12 and 12 and four and get home field advantage, and you know the rest is history. Daryl said, I don't think he could have coached us any harder the next year. That he, he, he had used every trick in the trade to get him to win five straight. And he didn't have to coach him the next year. But, yeah, he could be intense, but he also could be a heck of a lot of fun. I just think it's funny this whole time, Everson sitting here listening to all this. <laughs> 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 Hey, man, I'm just trying to be a good guy, man. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just over here nodding my head. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good guy, yeah. He, he's sitting there he's texting. So much with, fun. He's sitting there texting this whole time, texting with friends going. He, he just texts <laughs> I'm having to They're sit here and listen. They're putting Jimmy in the ring of honor. Tag me. No, no, I'm going to be like, can somebody get spags and napkin or something? Jeez. <laughs> All right, we continue with more Mick shots in just a moment. <laughs> The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Cowboys football and Miller Lite. What a pairing. Can cracks a kickoff. Tailgates going way past postgame. Sunday night overtimes followed by Monday morning swagger. Brisket in the smoker. Miller Lite in the cooler. America's team playing America's greatest sport. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys football tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. <sighs> back, back to Mick Shots. The Salvation Army's 27th annual Red Kettle kickoff returns to AT&T Stadium this Thanksgiving. Get excited to watch the one and only Dolly Parton rock the stage during the halftime show when Dolly. your Dallas Cowboys go head-to-head with the Washington Commanders. Tune in at 3.30 p.m. on CBS this Thursday. Did you happen to see uh, Dolly at, uh, in Knoxville yes. on yeah, Saturday? I did. I saw. Singing her version of Rocky Top. And she couldn't hear. Her IFB wasn't working, and it was too loud. And she's singing it, and she's going, I hope this is good because I can't hear. <laughs> and then they interviewed They interviewed her in the tunnel afterwards while the game was going on. She looked good, man. Oh. Yeah, she looks good. Sounded good, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So Dax, got, i, I got to find out where he got the T-shirt. He, he wore a T-shirt to the uh, on the charter and then uh, after the game, and it was a big – Dolly, it said, and mm-hmm. had kind of a kind of a picture drawing. So picture on she it. has her own collection, I think, of, of merch. Uh huh. I I believe that they're putting it somewhere here this week. I'm not sure if it's at the Star or the Stadium uh, for those merch sales, but I know I think our pro shop is doing a line. Well, you need them, to get so. on that. I'll see what we can do. See what you can do. Tell them we'll. Get four dollies here for yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday. There for we go. Sure. 
Absolutely. Dak was wearing the line, by the way, at his press conference, Mickey. Hey, what? It was the Dolly Dak, line? Dak Prescott was wearing the Dolly Parton line at the press conference. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. 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 Well, I just said it was the T-shirt. I didn't know where he got it. Dolly will turn 78 in January. Oh, man. Wow. Uh, Peyton Manning escorted her out in Knoxville. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yes. who's going to do the escort this on Thursday? Jerry. Of course it will. I mean, didn't he? <laughs> was I can't remember what year it was, if you were still there or not. He escorted Elizabeth Taylor out. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's tr- For the coin toss, I believe it was. Something like that. Well, the Cowboys were 10 and a half point favorites going into Thursday. So Already. Far. Already. I wonder if, well, Washington will get up for it just because it's the Cowboys, right? I don't trust them at all. I don't trust the commanders. It was actually to to play well. Yeah, to play badly. Oh, to play badly. I want them to play badly, but I don't trust them to do that. No, you're right. Yeah, these rivalry games, I I just don't. Even though none of those people playing on the team Mm -hmm. know anything about the rivalry. All right, you got a little story on the Elizabeth Taylor. It was 1989. It was. It was 1989. It was Washington. And it was Emerson. Joe Gibbs. Uh, Joe Gibbs spewed, first time I've ever gotten mad at the coin flip. Uh, because Jerry had Elizabeth Taylor there. for the. She was making an appearance to promote her perfume in Dallas when Jerry got the idea of having her do the coin toss before the uh, Washington-Dallas game, which was won by Washington, 30-7. to 7. Of course. The Cowboys won at Washington that year, their only win of that 1989 season. My, my only interception that year. Yeah. Jones escorted her <laughs> onto the field like a prom queen and her beau. The referee was unnerved. She yes. seemed somewhat unfamiliar with the workings of the coin flip, and frankly, Dexter Manley wanted nothing to do with her or Jones. Uh, what is the problem? I don't understand. What well, the lady came out to flip the cookie. Give her some it's respect, it's man. The red skins. It's a damn game. <laughs> Calm down, relax. You know we're gonna lose. We're one in we're, you know, one in fifteen year. You can see what was going on. Oh. They're coming out there wagging that stuff around. Give, give, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Did they screw up the coin flip? Uh, Does it uh, say? Well, here's what the story and, and this is a story from the Washington Post from twenty eleven. Uh, Dexter Manley wanted nothing to do with um, Elizabeth Taylor or Jones. To hell with Elizabeth Taylor. That new owner, Jim Jones, what's his name? He was going to let her call the coin toss like we were some kind of idiots. They tried to make this out to be some big Hollywood thing. This is Dallas, Texas, country folks. We're 1-15. <laughs> yeah. Calm down, bro. Jim Jones. Yeah, Jim Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it's a coin toss. You know, didn't, it didn't hold anything up. Evidently. <laughs> referee Pat Haggerty considered her more important than the Cowboys players. Here are his opening words. Captains from Dallas meet the captains from Washington. Captains from Washington meet Liz Taylor and Jerry Jones. <laughs> oh my gosh. Haggerty then flipped the coin. Liz, who was supposed to flip it, instead called it. Heads, she said. Oh, that's it funny. landed heads up, but one of the Redskins pro- processed that the visiting team is supposed to make the call. It's our ball, man, that's, said tight end Terry Orr. That's what said Haggerty to Liz, you've got me all shook up. <laughs> he flipped it again. Washington called heads and won. Liz and Jones then went to his luxury box to watch Washington win 30-7. to And he called him Jim Jones? <laughs> That's what, Wasn't that the Kool-Aid guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> I yeah. wasn't going to say that, but okay. yeah, yeah. It's, it's him. Yeah. Well, it's more history that no one knows mm-hmm. about. Okay. We continue our trip down memory lane. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a minute left. You got another mix shot? Uh, what are you writing down? I'm writing down the title for our... For our oh, podcast. <laughs> it just came into my head, and I don't want to forget. Well, it. Everson hasn't had a chance to say much in this show. Everson, would you like to give a mix shot? Hey, you should be happy. You got, you want to? No, Super no, Bowl. no. Really, when I came in last night, uh, my wife was was around. She's like, "Hey, Jimmy made it." I'm like, "Man, it's about time." That's about. That's basically all you could say, right? I, and you know, you would think that, you know, Jerry would take that all, <clears throat> you know, all the way, you know, and take that that that. You know, negativity, you know, all the way to the end. I'm glad he didn't because you just don't want to, 
You know, you don't want to well, what he let something like that just fester. It's already festered too long. And, and fester's a good word because part of him knew that if he didn't do it or he hadn't done it, it kept the conversation going, yeah, right? Yeah. And then I think it realized when DeMarcus Ware went in. That's when I thought that, that was... That now the question was, well, what about Jimmy? Right. So anybody else goes in, it almost diminished their day because now what about Jimmy yeah. would always well, it's, I mean, every year it's been what about Jimmy, but, yeah. you know, I, I think when you start, you know, holding things so personal against someone to where it, all, it eats away at you, Mm -hmm. You know, that's when you have to start looking at this a whole nother way. I've always said there's a lot of people out there I don't like, but they still deserve better. And and I said last night to my wife, Jimmy deserves better. You know, I could care less what I think about him. It's about, you know, obviously it's about more than just our relationship. And he'll get his moment on December 30th, mm -hmm. correct? We when we play the pointed Lions. pointed that out yet, mm -hmm. had we? Good yeah. job, <laughs> She just came in with that one. Thank and you. the reason for picking that game? That it's I a don't Saturday know. night game on ESPN, and who broadcasts on ESPN now? Troy that would be Aikman. one Troy. Oh Aikman. boy, mm -hmm. that was also part of the plan, mm -hmm. and part of the plan on now. For instance, Thursday's games on CBS, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the following Thursday is on Prime, and then the Eagles, Eagles game, is NBC. NBC. This was night. like the last Fox uh, game that okay. had uh, Fox uh, Cowboy game, at least for a while, and so that was why they picked the Carolina. Right. So Troy could be there, and I think. Uh, oh, you meant yeah, pick Carolina for, to, for, to make the announcement. Right. They wanted right. they right. wanted it to be a part of the Fox pregame show. Yeah. Right. That Imagine doing it at Buffalo. The Buffalo people were like, no, you can't do a press conference about <laughs> going well, into your ring, ring of honor. At that time of year, nobody wants to be in Buffalo. Uh, I, I will withhold the story, but there was some Carolina people that weren't happy with us after the game either. But I'll tell you that. When we, we kick you hear ass? another funny story about that? What? Is uh, bu the starting quarterback for Buffalo the year that uh, – Jerry Frank Wright. Frank Wright, who's on the other sideline, right? Well, guess who else was in the press box? Bill Polian. Oh, that's right. Yeah, oh, yeah he, was. he lives in Carolina, right? I saw him after the game, yeah. Because he was the GM there uh, when they beat the Cowboys or eliminated him from the playoffs the 96 season. So not only did he have to suffer through the 92 Super Bowl, which would have been the third Super Bowl in a row Buffalo uh, lost under his – jurisdiction uh, but yeah so I, when I saw that I said there's no way he's here for this <laughs> <laughs> they have to go through this again yes way all right uh, that does it for a Monday edition of Mix Shots in uh, Savannah. You learned a lot about Jimmy and Jerry in the last 45 minutes, didn't you? I did. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to December 30th and Jimmy's speech on that day. Yep. That'll be a good one. And we expect you for what your real job is. Oh, guys, this is your real job, too, right? <laughs> Get us Dolly's autograph or something. We'll see what we can do, guys. <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, no, no, let's get Dolly as a guest here. That's right. Show. Let's bring her well, on. That would be cool. Uh huh. That would be That'd cool. That would be really nice. And then we can get Jimmy as a guest on the show when he's in town. And yeah, when I'm out of town. <laughs> <laughs> in New Mexico. He's New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll shout at you again tomorrow here on Mix Shots. Go, Cowboys. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!